Hey friends, I'm out here at a live range, a close range, to further demonstrate the video that many of you may have already seen where I simulate the action of a revolver very similar to the one that Alec Baldwin used in the tragedy as far as the shooting of the uh, cinematographer Helena. You asked to see live fire, plus you wanted to see a few things about dropping the hammer. So I've brought actual live fire for this particular gun. This is a Colt single action army. Without going any further, I want to mention this. And a lot of you guys brought this to my attention in the video comments, and you're exactly right. Of course, this is not the gun that Alec used. It's an exact copy of it. In fact, the Pieta gun that he used is a replica of this Colt single action army. It's just a different brand, but they use the exact internal mechanisms and they make it the same way. Again, they model their pistol after this one. But you're exactly right in the fact that I show how the action should work in a working revolver. I don't know if the revolver that Baldwin had was defective or modified. So again, this is a working non-modified revolver. And I'm going to show you how it would work if it were properly working. Again, not malfunctioning and not modified. Okay, what we're going to do is a cowboy load. What that is is essentially loading only five rounds in here. The reason for that is for safety reasons because you'll notice this old type of revolver has the firing pin that's actually part of the hammer. It's connected to the hammer. A lot of the newer revolvers have transfer bars and they have a floating firing pin in the, the uh, revolver itself that the hammer slams into pushing it into the primer. This is an older model. And again, the Pieta that Baldwin uses modeled after this single action army. So my guess is gonna be that this is assumption that the firing pin is going to be connected to the hammer. So again, for safety's sake, we are going to be loading this with the old school cowboy uh, load. And we do get into the half cock position. We load one round. We're going to skip one of the chambers. Second round, third round, fourth, and fifth. Again, we are not going to put number six in there. The reason for the, the way that I skipped that first one is that right now you will notice that the one that I skipped is perfectly in line right now. There is no round in here which allows me to now, the only way to decock the pistol is to pull the trigger, hold it back, and lower the hammer forward. That's the safe way to do it. Number one, it's safer to decock it and you're not decocking on a live round, but it also makes it much safer to ride in if, a, say, a cowboy were on a horse or anything like that, where you're not gonna have the danger of bumping the back side of this hammer and pushing it into that the firing pin pushing the firing pin into the back of that primer so we're not going to load this six round now just to sort of set up the same scene that baldwin was faced with baldwin says in his comments in an interview with uh, mr snuffleupagus that the camera was pointed at him like you guys are the cameraman looking at me right the cameraman has a monitor that can be floated around for people to see the cinematographer helena grabbed the monitor and turned it this way facing her so baldwin is facing this direction not the camera he's not pointing at the camera he says in his interview that he was not aiming at the camera elena instructed baldwin to lower the firearm and then lower it lower it lower it so basically at his admission he was aiming the revolver at her side so the cameraman is where you guys are standing. Helena is standing right there with her arms out, holding the monitor facing her so she can see the shot. She's looking at what the cameraman is shooting at Baldwin, as far as the camera goes. And Baldwin is aiming the revolver down like this. The round that entered her, entered her from the side, went through her and hit the director behind her in the shoulder. So that's why I have this dummy here to simulate the actual angle and the trajectory of how everything went down. Because a lot of people have also asked that if two people were shot, how did that happen if one round went off accidentally? It's because it passed directly through Helena and hit the director, Souza, behind her. Real quick, we had talked in the previous video how you could tell if there were rounds in the revolver, what types of rounds you'll notice you can see the front of these rounds right here. So that's one indicator that anyone looking at the firearm can tell in many cases what type of round. That's clearly a projectile and not a blank right there. 
Okay, folks, remember we have our chamber on an empty round right here because we wanted to safely lower and transport the pistol. But in order to simulate with a live round, I need one in the chamber. So I'm going to go ahead and cock this, and I do not recommend this, but we are going to hold the hammer and then pull the trigger, hold the trigger back as I lower that hammer forward. That's not recommended. That's, again, why we do the cowboy load. Okay, now we're on a live round, and I have five rounds in here. Let me show you the different positions of the hammer. Let's call this zero. It's forward. It's in the relatively safe position, uh, all things considered, not considering the firing pin being on the hammer. That's zero. There's one. That's about a sixteenth of an inch that I pulled the hammer back at one. Can it fall forward on that? It can fall forward, but not past that. So the firing pin will not strike. As you see, it will not strike that primer. So let's go to position two. This is one. That's position two. You saw the cylinder start to move. Now we are uh, right in between rounds, but it will fall forward and get back in timing as far as the cylinder goes once I full cock this thing. So that means that is there a round there that it could fall forward on? Okay, my finger is off the trigger guard. You see right there, at half cock, we are still not able to drop that hammer forward. Notice my fingers are off the hammer. I may be holding the trigger guard here on the front of it, but I'm not, I don't have my finger on the trigger. So I'm going to try to stay out of the way so you can see the trigger a little bit better. Okay, so it's not falling forward. Now, we go back to full cock position. The cylinder is perfectly aligned with the primer pointing out, in line with the firing pin. This thing is timed properly. It's actually ready to go. Now, at this point, could the hammer fall forward accidentally? No, it could not. It could not. So let's lower this one more time. This is not recommended, but I'm doing this on a range facing down range. So again, Baldwin's claim was that he pulled it. He just pulled the hammer as far back as I could without cocking. So that means he would have had to have been past half cock, right? This is half cock. So he's all the way back, he says, and it fell forward and went bang. Do you guys see that? He says he went almost all the way back and let the hammer go, and it fell forward. It can't. It cannot fall forward. Now this is my guess at what actually happened on the set. Pull the trigger back put his finger on the trigger to gently lower it, to gently lower it. He was not trying to shoot anybody, in my opinion. I let go of the hammer, bang, the gun goes off. Okay, folks, the obvious question in all of this is, how did a live round wind up in a prop gun? There's allegations that the gun was being used for target practice with live rounds earlier in the day or at some point prior to the scene. Doesn't change the fact that no one checked. No one checked to see if the pistol was loaded with a dummy round, a blank round, or God forbid, a live round. A lot of negligence on this set. Um, I'm not an attorney, but I know right from wrong. And I know when uh, somebody is negligent at something, and whenever you are on a set and somebody is handed a revolver and told that it is cold, clearly there's negligence involved. Now, with that being said, the scene did not call for the revolver to be shot. It was not meant to be fired. So why was there anything in there? In other words, the armor, prop master, whoever, including Alec Baldwin, should have made sure there was nothing in there. Because if he was that close to her anyway, even a, a, a blank round with no projectile in it sends a pretty good amount of force. And that was a 45 Colt that they had. It sends enough force that it still could have hurt her had it not even been with a projectile in the tip of it. Unless this revolver was modified or malfunctioning, there's no way that Alec Baldwin could have shot Helena the way he said that he did without touching, pulling, whatever word you want to use.
but without manipulating that trigger. It is impossible for that hammer to fall forward without releasing it with the aid of that trigger. I let go of the hammer, bang, the gun goes off.